I will restart on top. Good evening, welcome to the Half Stone Half Hour. I'm Hammy, this is Falcroft Cost. Hope you're well. We've had no microphone going, so in this episode, we're going to be jumping in now, um, doing our usual ladder Wednesday, which is playing some ranked. Um, grinding up in the ladder and then while we're grinding up in the ladder we're also going to be just having a chat about how, what we've seen in terms of trends in ranked season 2 how the metagame has shifted so without further ado let's jump into my day game that is already in progress <laughs> um, I managed to do the absolutely mega amazing trick um, where I started streaming without a microphone on it happens to the best of us and the worst of us including me um, what have we got so we're playing a Paladin Angro deck by the looks of things, and as I need just work out the next play, um, a little bit loud. Okay, no problem. I'll set the microphone back a bit. Righty then. I need to get rid of this Blood Cell Raider. He's pretty big and nasty. He's been buffed up with a Blessing of Might. He's done five damage to me. How can I kill him in one turn? Well, there's a nice little combo I can go for. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and... I'm going to drop one damage. Oh, so that will... Uh, get one draw out and I'm, I'm actually just going to guzzle and be greedy for draw here. Bosh, right. Three cards drawn. So, in this season um, we have seen a bit more, as I was saying just earlier before my microphone was uh, switched on, we have seen more Paladin aggro decks um, and indeed more aggro decks in general. So, in terms of metagame, we explained how in previous episodes a metagame is the shifting face of what decks are popular or not. Think of a, a, it's very simplified and probably not entirely accurate, but think of a stone, paper, scissors analogy. Stone beats um, scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats stone. You will have rises and falls of popularity of certain decks, and then therefore rises and falls of the particular decks that may counter them, or strategies that may counter them, for example. So the example that I was fishing out initially was the Miracle Rogue. Um, the Miracle Rogue last season, and still this season, is pretty popular. So how does that help? Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple of armor smiths down and get aggressive. The Miracle Rogue was very, very popular at the end of rank season one. I said that 14, 13 out of 16 or something like that of the top North American decks were Miracle Rogues. So the Miracle Rogue really kicks off in the mid to late game. It's turn four, turn five that it gets going and it tries to survive until then. Control Warrior was also quite popular last season. And indeed, the Control Warrior keeps itself alive until the mid to late game and then starts throwing out big win conditions, big legendary minions. So naturally there is a hole there, there's a bit of a niche for aggressive aggro decks as they're known, aggressive early game decks to make a stand and cause some problems. Um, so how can that work? Well there are a couple of different ways it can work. Um, we have seen this season Paladin aggro decks like this one and you may have seen that my opponent at this point in time has really just been, um, how can I do this? I can. Oh, a mistake. I should have attacked with my cool Taskmaster first. It's a little bit awkward. Um, I'm going to take one on the chin. A little bit of lack of concentration there. So, when you have late game decks, and last season late game decks were quite popular, um, you do have the popularity of sort of aggro decks, more aggressive decks coming in and trying to kill these late game decks before they even get going. So this aggressive paladin that we are playing against is a good example of such a deck. He has heal with his true silver champion, as he is displaying now. You also have similar things such as, ooh, okay, and blood tooth. Um, he will throw a lot of early, to, uh, early game minions to put pressure down. He will work on the terms of tempo. He will try and really get things going. Um, I'm going to I'm going to just make sure I'm going to draw a bit of damage on him. So this aggro paladin um, is a good example of how the meta game has shifted a little bit in season two. We're up at rank six, you note, um, and we are seeing there are still some pretty solid aggro decks. Aggro warrior that we went through on Monday, and also aggro paladin. By aggro, it's not complete aggro. It will throw down a lot of early to mid game minions, things like. Um, Lepanomes to do the additional damage. It's not full on swarm. By swarm, I mean like a, a hunter with loads of one and two attack minions. You will have things with bubbles. You will have um, Argent Squires. You will have Argent Crusaders and similar types of things. And you will also have um, occasionally Blood Knights that dissolve those bubbles to get additional damage on top. So, lots of different options there. But the general theme of this Paladin deck is that it hits you in the face until you die. 
so it is still technically an aggro deck. It is trying to hit you and kill you before you've got any room to react. So we've seen our paladins swing away at my face. You can see I'm already on 18 health. I'm already quite low, so I need to start playing this carefully. Um, he's got a secret down. Generally, they like to play Noble Sacrifice, these paladin decks, because it protects their minions, keeps them alive. Um, either way, I'm going to immediately lob down... Hmm, what am I going to lob down? I'm going to lob down a cleave, because I want to start clearing away these minions. Um, and my next option... Uh, ooh, I can... Go for an interesting play here. I'd kind of like to remove that from the table, but I could also use your Drake into something similar. So I'm going to just Taskmaster up, and Armor up, and I'm not going to attack that yet. I want to make sure. There we go. I should have known. I said there was a Noble Sacrifice, and then I didn't play around it. That was a bit silly of me. Okay. So Noble Sacrifices, as we've just seen there, I sort of anticipated it coming and then did a play that sort of didn't really take into effect it coming. So a nice bit of hasty hammy failure there, but you can learn from it, so it's all good. Um, I like Noble Sacrifices because it protects their minions and just keeps them alive a turn more. Um, reduce damage on the hero, will keep minions alive as well. Let's have a look at Noble Sacrifice. When an enemy attacks, it's not even attacking a minion or a hero in particular, it's just if an enemy attacks period and that's a nasty option there, Sword of Justice you can also see in these decks because it would then just for every durability it drops buff minions up by one and you can see his priority is just to hit me in the face hit me in the face until I'm in trouble um, what I can now do though is look at making some trades so I don't really want to take too much damage to my hero um, it would be pretty good if I can start clearing the table off a little bit more um, Armoring up, I don't think I need it. He could Leroy, but that's a risk. Um, Azure Drake will give me a draw card, but it's not going to spell damage isn't really going to benefit me at this point. Uh, cool, how could let me do some removal? So could Fury War X. Um, the safest play would be to armor up here, but I think that I'm going to go Hela Mary. I'm going to. What am I going to do? Well, I could remove. I want to remove the biggest attacking threat. And put down Raggy. Okay, one in the face. So he needs to do, he needs 13 damage. He could Leroy with two Blessings of Might or something similar. Blessing, uh, the Blessed Paladin Blessing, of course, buffing the attack of a particular minion. So if he blessed, blessed this to heck, I could lose. <laughs> So that's a, that's a risky play. I mean, next turn I do have Alex Straza. I can drop his health down, or I can heal my health up. Let's not forget that. Gorehal will give me some good execute damage. I can remove Silverhand Recruit with Gorehal and armor up. We still do have two shield blocks, so there are plenty of different options here. So while we wait for our opponent to make his play, we were talking about aggro decks and paladins. So aggro decks season two a little bit more prevalent because of the popularity of Miracle Rogue and some of the later game decks. This aggro paladin is one such example. Um, we talked a bit about some of the tools he has. We can see that he drops lots of early minions. He uses um, True Silver Champion, similar to heal himself whilst attacking. You will often see the uh, Paladin lay on hands, restore 8 health and draw 3 cards. Equality, that will let him pick everything off. A lovely Paladin control card. Avenging Wrath, you also see that in this aggro deck. And the reason for that is he's guaranteed to do 6 damage to me with a lot of pain. And he's cleared my side of the table, so that's pretty painful. He can hit me for another two with his pally. That's going to be buffed for two. You can just see that he's chipping and chipping and chipping away. Finally, you can hit me in the face forward as well. Okay, so what options do I have? I can slam to draw a card. I can then go how one away. Um, but really, because I'm in a risky position, the thing I really need to do here is just heal myself up. And also put a threat on the table. I can still slam armor up and then start whipping away these minions next turn. Um, but an aggro paladin will probably try to ignore this if at all possible. You can see he's just swarming. You can see he's getting all the minions down. He'll be wanting to buff them up. Oh, and Tyrion's dropped as well. That is the finisher. And note that with a tank, that's going to be very hard for me to get past. Um, that could be a good game, actually. Um, you can see that I can drop Gorehow, and I've got a 15, but I can't do full damage. He will wipe me out next turn, so I have to go for a control play. Um, there, if I'd been able to just drop you know, a bit more damage earlier in the game, we could be okay here. But 
I need to work out a control play. If I remove Tyrion, remember I still take five in the face next turn um, from the Ashbringer that will be equipped. Okay, well first off I need to slam to remove the bubble. Let's see what that card draws me. Okay, I get a shield block. That will keep me alive a little bit longer. I can still shield block and execute to remove the Tyrion, but that brings out an Ashbringer, which will be a bit awkward. The axe will let me remove a minion before it damages me, but firstly I just need the protection. So I'm going to armor up. Next step. Okay, what can I do? Well, I can just knock that out. I'm probably going to have to trade this away with Alex. Um, that will equip a weapon on him that he can start swinging at me with. Um, the additional armor will be useful just in case he's got something in his pocket. So I think in this situation, let's firstly, we need to remove Tyrion anyway. That will equip the Ashbringer, still keeps me alive. Two damage. I think I'm going to um, throw down an axe, and with that axe, I'm just going to remove it. Oh, just a bit too slow. A little bit too slow. So we can see the effectiveness of this aggro paladin deck. I mean, I was not able to get his minions under control in the early game, and as a result, I've suffered for that. He has a solid nine damage on the table. Um, although I've armoured up, it's not going to survive me for long. So, uh, what are my options? I could really do with a brawl. And this is where my brawl would have been good. If I'd kept in two brawls, that would have kept some good protection on top of my deck. So maybe we'll go back to two brawls after this. We'll see how it goes. Hit in the face. Hit in the face. There we go. And you see I've still not pulled brawl. So with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage, um, and 9, I can get up to 11, but I need to try and remove as much of this from the table as possible. Now sadly, with the cards I have, and taking some of my armour into account, it's not. I can't quite remove enough, I do believe. I can armour up to 11, and then I can drop him from 5, 7, oh, it was 14, wasn't it? From 14 down to 12. But all I can do is throw down an Azure Drake and see what the Battle Cried card gets me. And Execute is not going to help me. Um, as far as I can see. I've also given away my charge. I can't do any damage to my own acolytes. It won't let me attack my own minions, of course, which is quite frustrating. So that is quite a nice example of how an aggro warrior, uh, an aggro paladin can just come in and take the game. So I can armor up, but you know what? That puts 11 on me. He's still got those damage. I can pick one of these off, but I'll still have nine, and then he'll swing through. So let's give that up as a bad match and keep on going. So I didn't really get any effectiveness. It's a little bit situational removing my Azure Drake right away, but do you know what? If we're going to be seeing more aggro, I don't know if I'm going to be seeing more aggro. Let's try a little tweak. Now, what you probably shouldn't do, I absolutely recommend you not to do what I'm doing now. Um, making twitchy changes. I just hate feeling that vulnerable. A brawl would have given me that game. So you might lose a game like I've just done and think, you know what I really could have done with? A brawl. I'm going to put another brawl in my deck. -la 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 -la. Um, generally, I would recommend that you play two to five games or something like that before making changes in between. Otherwise, you never get used to the deck that you're playing. Um, and the other thing is, is that it is situational. Um, you may find that metagame changes at particular ranks like say rank 10, rank 5, when people start getting into higher sort of, you know, skill levels of deck or some of the things like that. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> I've got lucky. Um, two brawls is going to be very much, beg pardon, appreciated against <laughs> a shaman. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know what? I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep those. Two brawls can only help me, but... With Shaman, you really need them under control in the early game. So, yeah, a little bit unusual. Shamans have been doing well. There's been some mid-range Shamans, like the one that we covered. So another thing in terms of insight into Rank Season 2, the Shaman has had a little bit of a rise again. Um, you have seen some mid-range Shamans that really keep the board under control in the early game with lots of spells, and then really try and, having got the board under control, smash through in the mid-game, using things like, you know, elementals and similar to do direct damage and put pressure on. So lots of fun there. I'm just going to slam that straight off the table. I could have waited for another turn for him to drop two and then used cleave. Um, there's no real reason he would have used spell damage. Um, so not to worry on that one. 
Welcome if you just joined us. You have missed us lose a game to an aggressive paladin. Uh, we have just been uh, reviewing sort of bits and bobs as to what's been going on in rank season two in terms of deck trends and similar. So welcome if you just joined. You have not missed a huge amount, if anything at all. So shamans, shamans, shamans often cited by people as being a little bit underpopular, but they can be oh so strong, as I feel the shaman is probably about to prove. So Violet Teacher, an interesting card, whenever you cast a spell, summon that 1-1 one, one apprentice, that's going to cause some problems. Um, I'm going to lob down my cleave to remove those, um, I'm not going to be able to remove that Violet just yet, but you know what I am going to do, I'm going to, hmm, decisions, decisions, I'm actually going to lob on a bit of I want some table control and that will start summoning 1-1s. One For that reason I'm actually going to coin out and get very aggressive. I'm into Brawl territory already. So. No Mission Venter. Now this is semi mid-range. I mean that this is a basic card, the Gnomish Inventor, but the ability of it just to jump in, and there you go, the Rock Biter synergizing up with his Violet Teacher, and he can just bin this off the table in one with his hero. He'll only take one damage, I will only draw one card. And we can see that, along with Bloodlust, if you have a lot of Violet Apprentices on the table, suddenly there will be a lot of Swarmy ability. Now, it's not quite time for me to Brawl. Um, I'm not going to Brawl right yet, because I would like as many effective cards on the deck as possible. So the Armorsmith will let me do some trading. I'm just going to try and keep this under control. I'm not going to brawl. If he tries to control me or drops along the table, I can brawl. But I've got two brawls, so there is no dramas at all in terms of dropping additional stuff down. Welcome all of you guys who have just joined us. Um, it is our Ladder Wednesday. We are doing a combination of reviewing the decks and trends we've seen in Rank Season 2. As it's almost the end of Rank Season 2. And also just playing a bit of Ladder and seeing what we come and play against. It's great to have you with us. So we can see that our Shaman really throwing down the table, going for table control, and you know what? I decided not to brawl last go. This is exactly why. <laughs> can you feel the brawl tonight? <laughs> I'm not going to do my impression of Aladdin. None of you guys need that in your life. But when playing against a swarmy deck, this is the exact kind of position that you want to be in. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, just in case I lose my Armorsmith, I may as well attack with it first before brawling. Sounds like a small move, but can make the difference. At least I get that one extra armor. And ding, ding! <laughs> oh, the Shaman Tears. Bush, 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 bush. Oh, that makes me feel so happy. <laughs> uh. And you know what? What he's going to do, he's not going to be down. And don't call a Shaman down and out just because you throw down one Brawl or one bit of crowd control like that. The important thing is that Shamans can come back so quickly, they can just fill the board with totems and all kinds of things and cause you untold amounts of pain, hurt, and suffering. Uh, you don't want pain or hurt or suffering in your life, so really just make sure that you try and keep the whole situ under control. What am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to throw down a Cleave, and the reason for that, I can not only pick off one minion, but I can buff this up twice, suddenly that's a threat, is he going to trade it away, is he going to keep that on the table, he could throw some spells, um, all sorts of options there, I'm not going to call Taskmaster, I'm just going to armour up. Okie dokie, so let's see what our Shaman friend has got. Um, Shaman's a little bit underappreciated, undervalued in the past, but they can come back oh so fast and quick. And as you've seen, if you've seen us play our fun Shaman deck, then there's also a big bunch of fun that you can have as well. There we go. That is going to be just this casual zap. The Earthshot gives the silence. The Fire Elemental brings in for the three damage. And you can already see that our Shaman is just absolutely straight back in the game. He's drawing additional cards, putting pressure on with that Vilas Teacher. He's got a big chunky minion down in the Fire Elemental, so we cannot rest on our laurels. Do I brawl now? Um, well, my health is low. He's going to hurt me a lot next go, but I don't want to brawl just yet. Um, if I drop a Baron Geddon and a Whirlwind, then that will let me remove everything, and it will force him into a decision as to whether he wants to trade. But if he gets in another overwhelming table position, Baron Geddon could start wiping out his totems for me. So I've got a, quite a tough decision to make here. Um, 
if I shield block and whirlwind, I'll certainly draw a card and I can remove one through off the table. I might get something else then that will help me. But Baron Geddon and a whirlwind will definitely remove two of the threats. For that reason, I'm going to go with Baron Geddon and see if he's going to try and remove stuff. So, there we go. If he leaves that on the table for another turn, it's toast. He may have spells and cards that he can just blow Baron Geddon away with. But at least I should probably be able to get something that can pick off that elemental. I am, however, low on health, so we've got to be careful. From a position of having his minion, minions filling the board, um, our shaman is now starting to fill things up again. And he's gone for the trade. Do you know what? I'm happy with that. There are lots of big win conditions still left in my deck. I've got Alex Straza. I've got all of the big ugly stuff. And do you know what? This has bought me a turn of reprieve. Shield block. Gorehowl. I can't go house. So I'm going to shield block again. Then I've got a whirlwind, and uh, I'm not going to spell damage that off, but I'm finally going to armor up again. So 12 armor in one go. Um, and a couple of card draw, I've got a gore howl, I can start chipping away at his minions. I know that in my deck I have left a Gromash Hellscream, I have a Ragnaros the Fire Lord, I have a, probably a Cairn Bloodhoof as well. Although Cairn is not too strong at this point in the game, just because he takes a couple of turns to get going. And then I've got... Gorehound in hand, I've got a Cruel Taskmaster in hand, so I have my Execute combo and Alex Straza as well, let's not forget. I've got all of that still to come. So as long as I can keep this table under control, I've got potential to get things done. Okay, now our Shaman friend has either got spells, he's waiting for wind conditions, he is resorting to totems. If he is resorting to totems, we have a simple solution. Gorehound is not going to be my Execute play, there is no point in me brawling, but what I can do is just start picking off these threats. The threat is the flame totem because it makes everything else do damage. So you know what, even if my Gorehow doesn't hit him in the face once, even if I just use the durability and use all of the attack to kill totems, kill totems, keep the table under control, I'm looking for an Alexstrasza, Alexstrasza, beg my pardon, for 15, into a Gromash with Cruel Taskmaster for 12, and then if I've got some attack left on my weapon, that could be the win. So I'm just waiting to see what I top deck. More totems. There goes the tanky totem. Let's see what we can do. So while our shaman friend he taps on the table, interesting. He is definitely I wouldn't say stalling, but he is certainly waiting to see what he can grab. So what moves do I have here? Well I've got an obvious card draw move that I'm gonna go for. I just need to get my deck accelerated now. So I'm going to drop my Acolyte, I'm going to go for the, if only I had my Baron Geddon, that would be good. Um, so that is one down. I could drop Executes, I'm actually going to save those Executes just in case some real horrible threat comes along. Um, but Armouring Up is sensible, I need to save the Taskmaster because I probably want to... Um, that's going to heal both of those up again. Um, either way I can probably pick them off next turn. I'm going to take a risk and spend one execute. Um, I've still got one remaining just in case there's one big threat. <laughs> yep, you probably heard. I do apologise. My phone was not on silent. OMG. 3 4 damage to all minions. Overkill much. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, I'm just hanging on and waiting. And do you know what? This is not good. Um, the longer this goes on, um, I don't need to get twitchy. I can faceless. I've still. I'm going to keep that in hand because that gives me some nice options. But I just need to keep swinging away. My God, I don't want to task my stuff because I want to use that if at all possible to buff up my grush. So I was hoping that we'd get a Miracle Rogue or something as our third game. I will see if we've got enough room to uh, just time. We're coming up to our half hour, but I'm just going to see if we've got enough time to maybe sneak in a third game. But if we can't on the stream, then uh, in this commentator part of the stream, then we will certainly continue to play after a break again, as we do most evenings. Okay, right. Guys, is it time to brawl? Is it not time to brawl? Mm, well, this is, you know what, I still don't have my win condition in play. He could be waiting for something big like I am. Um, but this is just getting to the feeling, if I leave this one more turn, how many damage can he do to me? I could leave it one more turn and see what he decides to do. Um, 
but I don't want to leave it too much longer. I don't think it's quite Brawl O'Clock. I can afford to take some armor damage unless he drops something like a Ragnaros. So I'm going to hang on in one more turn. We'll go for a, a, a Cajones of Steel play and see who blinks first. If he suddenly drops something like an Alexstrasza, a Ragnaros or something similar. Ooh, okay, this is, could be getting nasty if he throws anything else down on the table. <laughs> Hashtag time to brawl. Hashtag pray for Hammy. <laughs> pray for Warrior. Oh, I should have brawled last turn. <laughs> that is what we were scared of. Oh, he better not have an execute play. Uh, right, you can see suddenly everything is swung against me. We should have brawled. So, it might be a little bit too little too late. Um, but let's get all that off the table and see what we have left. Bye. Okay, well, that wasn't nice. I didn't particularly enjoy that. I shall not be visiting Brawl Town for my summer holidays this year. You did. It's a fair call in the chat. You did tell me, should I have listened to you? I should have done. I will probably end up regretting this. <laughs> I stared death in the face and it smacked me right back. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, oh, let's see. So now we're still in sitting territory. This is not good for us. We're just not having the greatest luck with draws, it has to be said. But the real annoying thing here is that I still know in those six cards left, we've got Alexstrasza, Gromash, Ragnaros. We've not seen Ragnaros yet, have we? I'm pretty sure we haven't. Um, also, don't forget that we haven't seen a hex, I think, from our shaman. So he's probably got a couple of hexes he can use to cause us trouble. And also there might be another bloodlust. So this is by no means signed and sealed and delivered. Um, I do have the card advantage. Earth shock. that is going to mean that I don't get the 2 for one with Ken. This game is a little bit close. And what are we going to get? Oh, Alex Straza. Right, okay, do I heal myself? No. Do I smack him in the face with it? Yes. Um, I do not have my precise win combo in play, but you know what? I just want to get some anger going on this guy. Some anger and fear. So, mm, 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 yep, I'd probably rather take a damage on him. I could have shield slam there rather than use the weapon. Possibly an option. Generally, when you've got shield slam, another form of control, I tend to like it going with shield slam first. Reason for that is armor can disappear and suddenly your shield slam does not do as much damage. Um, but. Oh, uh, lightning storms overloading. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Didn't get the most out of my can. A lightning bolt. He's just overloading himself up to the gunnels. What wind condition does he have left? He could have an Alakir the Windlord. He could drop something like a rock biter weapon on his Alakir the Windlord. So we are in no position where we can relax. We just don't know what's going to be happening. Um, okie dokie options. I'm going to have to throw this down. Uh, I know that as soon as I drop a Cruel Taskmaster to remove something from the table, then I'm going to draw Gromash next turn. I just know it, but I'd like some control in play. So for that reason, this is hyper-aggressive, guys. I really wouldn't go for this. If I lose, then you can look at this turn and you can say, oh, that was the misplay that did it. I'd like some more armour. Health-wise, it's balanced on a knife edge. I know that I've got Ragnaros. <laughs> oh, Christ. How many more spells are you going to throw? How many more spells? There's the Fire Elemental. He's hoping that I can't deal with it. Little does he know. Alakir or Dewhammer, says the chat. I agree, absolutely. Okay, interesting choice here. I can Faceless Manipulate to threaten the Fire Elemental. Or I can just throw down Ragit. Now, in this situation, it is genuinely a better idea... To keep your win condition until you're sure that it's going to do the damage. Um, and yeah, if he drops Alakir now, I'm going to weep. <laughs> With six cards to three, there's the Azure Drake. He's getting a lot of table damage down. Totemic quarter. That puts a tank down. Oh, the luck! The luck! <laughs> he can hit me in the face. I cannot hit him in the face. But, oh, thank goodness, I have a shield slam. So that is going to help me. And the reason that can help me is I can slam this off the table. I can trade this away. And it is just... Chipping away. Trying to drop the damage down. 
he can probably, he might have a spell, or that. I don't know what he's got left, I've got a marginal health advantage. If I can just get the table clear, and of course remember I'm cards down as well, so I'm going to start taking um, attrition damage. Two is your drakes! Oh my goodness, it's big win conditions. They're not big win cards, but they're just going to chip away at my health. And there goes the hex. That is his first out of two hexes. So I may not have any option now, but to simply throw down a, a raggy. Um, is that going to be... No, Gromash is my last card. What are the odds? Right. What is best to do here? Well, he's going to do me 8 damage. I can armor up. He's probably not going to have an execute. Do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. It's not a YOLO bomber. It's just a YOLO. I need this Ragnaros to take out one of those two. It's probably going to take the totem, isn't it? Oh, okay, right. Some luck. Hashtag pray for Felcroft. <laughs> You don't want to pray for Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's got uh, millions of fans around the world. I think there'll be some marginally more difference in the world of Hearthstone for sure if we get some luck. Okay, he's got the elemental, and you can see the Shameless come back twice. There goes Doomhammer. He's probably just going to swing straight into my face. No, he's removed the tank. Okay, table position is not mine. And the last thing that I know is going to drop is oh, in the face. All right, can I remove enough damage? And the last card is going to be Gromash Hellscream. So let us play the calculating game. The removal, I need to... Oh, hang on. I need to remove this. He will probably be able to, if he wants to, remove Gromash. Um, I need Gromash to take the tank and he will then have five health left. He won't be able to quite pick that off, depending on his last couple of cards. It's all going to come down to what his last couple of cards are. So the first play is, let's drop Gromash, let's armor up. I then remove using my axe. I then remove the most damaging of the cards using that to buff it up. And then, do you know what? Pray for Failcraft. Take the elemental. Take the elemental. Okay. So, ooh, hashtag sniper rag. <laughs> Okay, we've got a Doomhammer in the face. Twice. Thrice. Oh, what's he going to hex? It has to be this. Oh, and I take damage from fatigue. Right. It all comes down to this. <laughs> Are we feeling lucky? The question is, do I feel lucky? Do I? Do I? Okay, guys, it's a one in four chance of a win. <laughs> YOLO! Kill the shaman, kill the shaman! Oh, no! No, the wind fury, the wind fury, the wind furiness. Oh, well, guys, we were so close. <laughs> that is an example. Two losses straight, but it's a nice, nice bit of game. There were two good games there, I feel. And as you can see, again, two losses straight. That leaves us teetering, teetering on the edge of dropping rank six. And we have been bouncing around between rank five and rank six for some time. So, two examples of two aggro decks, an aggro paladin and a very aggro shaman. So what could we have done against those decks? Well, we tried our best to control. Some of the control wasn't quite coming out. Then again, there were a few YOLO plays and misplays by me there as well. It was very, very aggressive. But although we lost, I actually really enjoyed that game. I feel as though we could had a good little bit of learning from that. So let's just finish up by taking a look at this. I will stream on afterwards as well. What could we do to this deck? Well, okay, there has been a Kalento. Um, is it a Kalento version? It might have been Kit Kat's newest version. So let's take a look at the deck that we were running uh, there. Now the deck that we were running there was this one. It has the usual early game control. We were playing around a bit in the middle. Um, we've not seen that Frothing Berserker as much as we would have liked. Um, the original version from Season 1 ran two Frothing Berserker, one Brawl. We went up for two Brawl there. You saw that even with two Brawl, um, and we Brawled twice. We should have Brawled one turn earlier. Um, Lud in the chat, you totally called that Brawl. If we'd called that Brawl and Brawled that one turn earlier, that would have actually been the difference between winning and losing that game. If we had Brawled at the right time, if we had not taken that Bloodlust to the face with all of those small minions, um, then we would have had enough health left to survive and possibly win. So I think we can look back at that Shaman game and say that we, by not using our second Brawl when we felt that we could have done, that was really the difference. 
Um, but, okay, that aside, against the Paladin, we just had a bit of a bad draw, but at the same time, looking at this deck, you can see that there's so much control in the early game, but for some reason, the more aggro there is, the more you do wonder whether you should stack things earlier to give you even more early game pressure. How could we do that? Well, we could certainly probably get rid of one Brawl and drop in maybe another Acolyte, uh, another Frothing Berserker. Some decks are even going out and using the... Um, the his name I can't quite remember, but he is two mana and he does pew pew pew. Not the Doomsayer. It's the other guy. What's your name, other guy? The Wild Pyromancer. You even see some decks running Wild Pyromancer to remove tokens. So you can deal one damage to all the minions. You can throw down a spell and just have additional clearance with the Pyromancer. Uh, boom, baby, boom. Bad is good. It's down with government. He is a rebel. A rebel with a cause. And that cause is killing Swarmy decks. So this is sort of current version. Now, actually got another version of this, so let's just have a quick sum up. This is what Kit Kats, I believe, has moved to into turn two, and I've been trying this as well. So you can see the differences. You can see there's a little bit of a smoothing out of the curve in the early game, but what does this have different? Well, if we come in, it's got that Wild Pyromancer, two Frothing Berserker, so that really pulls us even more into the early game. We've got even more controllability. The uh, Frothing Berserker, if it buffs up quick, it can be used to remove tokens, and it can get big damage quick, it takes tempo, and that it forces your opponent to take tempo back. So I might start trying to play with this version. The more aggro I play, I'm thinking of switching to this version. The Pyromancer gives you more early game uh, control as well. You can throw that out too. Just the one brawl, so not being quite as aggressive. And you can also see the other big change here is that Ysera drops in there. Yet another big late game finisher. Reasons for that? Well, Ysera, if you survive in the early game and you get your Sierra down with all of these other win conditions you're just throwing out pretty much a win condition a turn from turn six onwards providing you get the draw and your opponent just if they can't deal with each and every single one or they can't kill you by then then you've won the late game um so the more control there uh, the more aggro there is i might actually give this a go so you guys if you're staying tuned in i might be 15 minutes to half an hour i will tweet when i'm going live again uh, we will probably give this version a go and see how it goes uh Final question before we wrap up. Question from the chat. Why two Acolytes of Pain? Well, two Acolytes of Pain. Um, there are oh so many ways that you can use that just to get you to draw cards. Now, you could perhaps drop down to one, but the purpose of Acolyte of Pain is card draw. You want it. The more turns that that survives when you drop it, the more damage it takes. If it takes three damage, you draw three cards. Now, you can trigger your own damage in several ways. You can use it to trade against small token minions with low attack. You can use Whirlwinds. If you use a Whirlwind at the same time, you've got an Armor Smith and an Acolyte of Pain. You get one card and two armor. If you have a Frothing Berserker on the table and you, your opponent has got a lot of minions on the table and an, an Armor Smith or an Acolyte of Pain, not only do you get armor, but you draw cards as well and you buff up the frothing berserker so say there's five minions on the table suddenly your frothing berserker goes from two attack to five attack so the reason why two acolytes of pain you don't have to have two but with all of the other early game cards you have in there a lot of them have very very good synergy they all trigger each other's abilities having lots of them down in the early game will let you stack different benefits so two acolytes of pain many different ways you can get that to draw cards so thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour. Um, we have played a couple of games. It's been Ladder Wednesday where we've played a couple of games, taken a couple of defeats, but I think we've learned a bunch from those. We've also taken just a very, very quick look at some of the trends, primarily to do with aggro, that we've seen pop up in Season 2. So I'd like to play an aggro deck if we do another episode maybe on Friday night, we'll do a follow-up and finish it off, or we'll try some other bits and bobs to finish off really what we've seen in Season 2 as well. That's not a season roundup. We've only seen two decks that we've played against, and we've discussed aggro as well. Um, as a bit of sign-off, um, as always, uh, we do stream this show live. Uh, what we then do is, um, after the live streamed part where we do commentary, we then export this video. We then play on afterwards without voice commentary, but we'll keep playing, answering questions, doing similar things. So, if you have not tuned in before, where can you find us in the future? Twitch.tv forward slash Failcraftcast. We stream live Monday through Friday, we always try to do, and that is around 7.30 to 8pm UK time at the moment. It's British summer time. But we'll always tweet an hour, half an hour or so before we go live every evening. So, if you're watching internationally, keep an eye out on Twitter at Failcraftcasts. Um, if we're not streaming or video streaming the day, tweet us anytime. We'd love to have a chat about games, all different kinds of things. 
love to have a chat with you. Um, if you're watching live or you want to see the archives, go and subscribe on YouTube. It's youtube.com forward slash Falcroftcast. All of our old videos there, archived stuff, tactics videos, decks videos. Monday night, New Player Monday, we do deck breakdowns and analysis. Tuesday Arena, Tuesday, you pick an Arena hero and pick a deck for us, then we play it all together. Wednesday, like tonight, Ladder Wednesday, part laddering, part analysis. Thursday, we will go into more advanced concepts. We will look at more integral card game concepts. And Friday, we'll either do a very, very fun, fun Hearthstone game or we'll play just an entirely different game as a break. So that is us. Last but not least, Felcraft.org, the website. You can find articles. We tend to put videos up, so you will see the videos a few days maybe after they've actually been uh, streamed live or chucked on YouTube. And we also try and update it more with various bits and bobs like deck lists, links, and things that live better on a website rather than in a video. And as a call out before we sign off, we are looking for some help. If you fancy writing articles for the website, if you fancy helping maintain the website, if you maybe fancy getting involved with Felcraft beyond it just being me, we'd love some help. Hearthstone, any other games, we'd love to hear from you. So drop us a tweet or have a chat, we'd love to hear from you. So thank you very much for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Um, we'll be signing off, taking a break, and then we'll probably be coming back and streaming some more Hearthstone later. So thank you very much for tuning in. Take it easy and hopefully see you soon. Like, comment. If you do not like or if you think we could improve this content, don't like or comment, um, but do just get in touch somehow and let us know. Um, even if you want to comment and say how we can improve. If you think this was terrible, just let us know what we could do that would be better for you. 